By the end of the 1970s, Iran and Iraq had eyed each other warily and soon came to blows in what was known as the Iran-Iraq War. Already grappling with the challenges of the Cold War, the UN was faced with another test brought by the Iran-Iraq War from 1980 to 1988. The UN helps uphold fairness and justice on the international stage. However, if the countries, people and other parties involved ignore it, then it cannot play that role effectively. That's why the UN did an utmost in the Iran-Iraq war, issuing several resolutions. On July 20, 1987, after extensive consultations, the UN Security Council adopted Resolution 598, calling for an immediate ceasefire. It took one year before both parties accepted Resolution 598. Saddam accepted it immediately, but Iran refused. They wanted much stricter terms for the ceasefire than the Security Council. They wanted Saddam punished as a war criminal, a mention of who was on the side of justice and so on. But one year later, they were worn out. The day after Saddam's counterattack, they accepted the resolution. Ayatollah Khomeini said that accepting Resolution 598 was worse than drinking poison, but he had to do it. The UN provided both sides, Iran and Iraq, with a letter to go climb down from the high tree they both said. In August 1988, after almost eight years of war, and following a period of intensive negotiations between the UN Secretary General and the two foreign ministers, the Islamic Republic of Iran and the Republic of Iraq agreed to a suggestion of then Secretary General Javier Perez de Guiar, which combined the establishment of a ceasefire and the beginning of direct talks between the two foreign ministers under the auspices of the Secretary General. The eight-year-long conflict had finally come to an end. The Iran-Iraq war has become a testament to one of the most successful stories of the UN in mediating a major regional conflict.